Hello. Hey, Harry. Hey, David. How you doing? Doing well. How are you? Very good, thank you. You have a resplendent mustache. Oh, and why? I'm, thank you. I, that, I'm very that is, impressed. Oh well, well. Now I'm flattered. Now I don't know what to say. <laughs> no, no. Just take the compliment. It's gorgeous. This is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm joined by Harry Jarvis and Laurie Harrison in the Stars of Followers, which is coming to digital and on demand on March 24th, 2023. I'm going to talk to them right now. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. I'll spend a lot. Thank you. So thanks so much for joining me. This is Harry Jarvis, who plays the main character, Jaunty, in the new film Followers, which is coming to digital and on demand on March 24th, 2023. It is a social media inspired ghost story where Jaunty plays like an upcoming YouTube influencer you know social media personality i feel like you should actually be doing this interview because you will probably do it better than i will but uh, thanks so much for your time and, and i'm looking forward to any pointers that you have no that was great i didn't have to do the intro that was lovely uh, uh, i'd rather i'd rather you just do it that's so much better okay well i'm, <laughs> I'm learning from you so yeah send me send me your your ghost notes after after this thing hey there we go <laughs> how long did it take you to come up with that one that was nice <laughs> uh, just something spoke to me in this room so it was probably a guys yeah, yeah hopefully yeah. Well, hopefully not but you know what if if that boosts my follower count then you know it is a price i will have to pay <laughs> uh so uh the first question how did you get involved in this film it feels like a fun production but uh, it also yeah. just kind of feels so random like how did you get involved in this yeah, no, it was quite random. Um, the director and writer, Marcus Harbin, reached out to me and um, just said, I thought you'd be really good for this. Um, I think he'd, he'd seen me in something else before. And um, and we read through it. And at the time, it was very... Um, have you ever seen Cabin in the Woods? Oh, yeah. yeah. The film. Yeah. It was that, that was the kind of vibe. There's a lot more uh, surveillance on them mm -hmm. as opposed to found footage. Um, and all the characters were extremely stereotypical uh, for the horror genre. You know, you have the jock, you have the angry one, you have the scream queen. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very much meant to be almost spoof-like in that way. And that I found that really interesting, um, mixed in with the social media thing, because it's a real comedy horror. Um, mm -hmm. And I find that a lot more fun than just the dark, darker horror. Um, and so, yeah, we, we worked on the script together a bit. He... Um, went through lots of cuts and it evolved into what it is now and uh then we started shooting so that's how i got involved that's awesome i'm, I'm glad that you were able to like work with the script as well because that must have, that was another mm. one of my questions is like you know it feels like the interactions here are kind of you know they're obviously they have story points but there also is a certain amount of personality between the characters so you know i wasn't sure yeah. if it was all the script or if there was improv some combination of the two tends to probably be where it landed but combination yeah there was actually a lot of improv uh by the end of it um dan's character pete especially the, the big <laughs> scottish lad he um he improv so much he just enjoyed insulting me whenever he could like <laughs> every, every every time he had to call john to your name it was a different name each time and there were some times that we just had to stop filming and go dan that that's you can't say that that's never gonna <laughs> make it anywhere i can't say any of them on this interview it'd be cancelled immediately so um, well, but it, yeah. let's give it a shot now. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we'll no, you, nice. can get, you can get away with it in a Scottish accent. It kind yeah. of sounds charming in an yeah. English accent. No, it doesn't sound too good. But the, um, yeah, no, there was a lot of improv. Um, the script, yeah, just kept evolving, kept changing. I, I, I did like a little bit with the script. I mean, most of the script was, you know, is it was, it was Um But uh, I gave a few notes and stuff here and there, and so I think I think a few people did, you know, just collaborative that happens in indie filmmaking a lot more i think yeah no it definitely feels like a like a collaborative pot that happens when yeah the yeah film comes around uh so did you do anything to prepare for this role i mean like nah, on the one nah, hand you're nah, a nah, regular nah, person nah. but on the other hand you're a big personality so i don't know i wasn't sure where you fell in that yeah no sure um so i obviously went on um a bunch of different big vloggers who i thought were comparable to john team and um just watched hours and hours of these people vlogging um and i also tried to go as far back as i could find in their oldest vlogs to find their worst um most terribly produced vlogs and try and oh. replicate that at the start because i just wanted john T to feel inauthentic mm -hmm. um uh cheesy i wanted the production of the cutting and everything to feel bad and the voiceovers to feel just like a bad vlogger you know mm -hmm. someone who's like trying to start up their own career and then as it continues i wanted 
I knew the quality was going to get better anyway because we were going to have the sponsors come in, different, more high-grade cameras come in. Um, and so I wanted John to kind of evolve with that. And even though he becomes become this more egotistical, and I wanted to, I wanted it to be less uh, cheesy and start becoming a little bit more um, horrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Polished but horrible. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And Marcus and I, the director, had a little um, graph. Graph, hey, probably not the right term, but uh, numbered scale. Mm-hmm. So we, he'd say, uh, this is a 3.7 which meant um, John T still really bad at vlogging three out of 10, but he is extremely egotistical seven out of 10, or, <laughs> you know, this is a uh, nine one. He's way better at vlogging, but he's really humbled at this point because something's happened and it'd be like that. So um, we check in with each other and we had these little notes. We adjust them based on what we thought for each vlog. I love that. It's like a, like a D and D character. You're like, what's uh, exactly. what alignment am I right now? <laughs> yeah. Just roll a few times. Okay. Perfect. We'll go with that. <laughs> and uh, the fact that you went and watched like older uh, bloggers and, and YouTubers mm. stuff that like touched a part in me, because if I ever go back and watch like old interviews and reviews, I'm just like, Oh God, like that is, yeah. that is rough. I mean, I'm not, not saying I'm yeah. good now, but like I was very rough back yeah. in the days. <laughs> but it's, it's even, it's rough to watch the film. Like all this stuff. Cause I watched the start and I'm like, Oh God, I hope this doesn't just seem like bad acting. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like, I'm trying to be clear, this is like a really cheesy vlogging, but that's always like a diff- difficult balance strike when you try and act badly. Mm-hmm. You know, it has to be clear that it's bad acting as opposed to, um, you know, bad. Yeah, as opposed to bad acting. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and you, you talked about how like you progressed jaunty through the film that leads to a question like was this movie filmed chronologically did you kind of jump back and forth was it somewhere in between because I, I imagine that must be tough to be like okay now you're polished now you're sure. rough sure um i'll try to remember actually we shot a lot of it chronologically because we had the luxury of being primarily in one location so with that you can shoot more chronologically than you usually would but I think for the vlogs, we shot most of the vlogs in one day or two oh, wow. days oh, wow. because it's all the same location. So it's easy just to be there and kind of find your way through these vlogs. Um, although we did mix it, we did mix it up a bit. It was a while ago we shot, it was about five, five, six years. Um, oh, wow. A long time. Yeah, the pandemic um, really slowed the process. And also, I, I don't know if you know, but unfortunately, our, our director passed away. Hmm. Um, uh during the post-production process oh, wow. he, he got, yeah yeah the terminal cancer unfortunately oh um yeah which is really rough but um just to you know bring them down a little bit yeah <laughs> but, thanks for uh, that. yeah thanks for that <laughs> yeah yeah i know but uh no it was it was it was it was rough but um but eventually you know it, 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 it did come out but uh, yeah chronologically we generally shot as much as we could in chronological order Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes time permitting or it's just technical cool times you know, producers figuring out what's going to be best for light and what have you um, we had to change it around a bit but it was nice to shoot mostly chronologically because you usually head onto a film and you're shooting like the big emotional scene first or like a big kiss scene or a sex scene you're like whoa nice mm-hmm. to meet you okay <laughs> into this. and it was nice to be able to build as the story kind of was intended to yeah, for sure. Or you hear like people that have to come in like emaciated for an end scene and then like slowly gain their way on the way back and you have to like exactly like, walk backwards throughout. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. That is really interesting that this is that this was about six years ago. So this was like a pre pandemic yeah. movie. Oh yeah. That very, looks very like it could have like it looks like it could have been filmed during the pandemic. Like it, a lot of it, it would be like a perfect pandemic movie because it's a small cast, it's one location. But then I, I'm thinking back, like those party scenes, those are definitely not pandemic movie scenes. So that's that kind of an yeah. interesting way that straddled that line. That was fun. I tell you, that is that was one of the the last. No, no, I did a couple of things, before, but but that was w- one scene that I remember that was so just pre pandemic, just being able to dance and. Uh, well we've already been through how bad my dancing ability is so maybe that wasn't the best but uh, that, that was uh, good acting so there you go. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no we were talking before weren't we about how i'm a dreadful dancer but um behind me anyway um but yeah i that that scene was so much fun uh just there was just a bunch a bunch of people we'd shoot late at night 
and I uh, I knew a few of the people as well who came on as, as extras. So it was just it was just such a laugh. Yeah, I imagine it must have been fun to have everyone like hoist you on their shoulders and go like, John, oh yeah, done. that was that was really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a, that's awesome. Yeah. That's like a good way to like end the movie. I always love hearing that where like they try to film the big celebration scenes towards the end so that the whole cast and I just kind of had that. It. I just wrapped uh, a show and I'm kind of NDA so I can't talk about it but there was a big celebration scene and they left it till the last day and then we all got champagne after it finished and then headed out to a bar and had the wrap party. That's awesome. That is fantastic. So you pretended to be drunk and then you got actually drunk. Yeah. Theoretically. Or or maybe you got really drunk on set. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't do that. Method acting, I believe is what they call it. (laughs) Method acting. (laughs) Yeah. Apocalypse now, uh, now style acting. That's what it is. So I'm just curious, like your character. I, I thought you did a fantastic job, uh, you know, in the vlogs, like as a an influencer personality. Did you pull any of that out, like for your regular life or like later roles? Like, do you? I don't know if you have like a if you put on vlogs or if you put YouTube mm-hmm. videos up. But have you? Did you pull any of that out and like use it in your regular personality? Or was that just a character and now you're? Just, there. just, just a character for me. I mean, I so I, I'm not big into social media. Um, to be honest, I'm not. Yeah, I, it's it's not really my kind of um vibe, for want of a better word. Uh, but it takes a very you know strong heroic person to do things like that. It does. <laughs> it does. Well done. <laughs> um, I mean, my girlfriend does as well. She's she's very very good at it. But it's not my. Uh, it's not something that I, I can do regularly. I think it, even if I was to do it, I wouldn't take anything from what I tried to do with John T, mm-hmm. because that's 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 just not what you want at all, really, in a in a human being. Even some of these the bloggers that I watched their earlier stuff and took, you know, worse vlogs, even their better stuff, it's just horribly egotistical at times. I felt like watching that. I mean, you know, not to name names, but Logan Paul. Um, <laughs> Well, you, you can know, just there's... tell with Jaunty with the way that he wore his hat. Like, that is, that exactly. is, a, that is a crime already. But it actually, yeah. it worked too. So, hey. Hey. hello. She's midway hello. through moving. I'm so sorry I'm late. No I'm so, so sorry. I got really carried away doing a million and one things. I'm helping someone move past her. I'm just going to shut my volume up. No worries. Okay. No worries at all. So, that's the end of the interview, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah so, we, thanks uh... so much for joining me. All right. Thank <laughs> 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 uh, you. Uh, I'll, I'll still go back and ask a few questions. So thanks so much for also joining me. This is Larice Harrison, who is another star and follower. She plays Zana. Uh, again, followers comes to Digital On Demand on March 24th, 2023. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Of course. So we asked, uh, I asked Harry a few questions already. I'll, I'll kind of circle back and ask a couple of them for you too, because I'm always curious to hear. Uh, you know, I guess cool, the, I can the, relax. Yeah, go, <laughs> Harry, go have a go have an acting drink. You know, it'll be fun. Yeah, absolutely. All right, see you guys in a bit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm actually going to refill my coffee. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I guess the first question is, how did you get involved in this film? How did you like get onto this project? Um, typical came through uh, to my agent. He passed it on to me. Um, I hadn't read the full script at that point. I didn't read the full script until actually it was time to meet the producers and Marcus. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean... It just kind of felt really right. You know, I did a chem read with Harry and it just went well. It it feels like so long, it was so long ago now. That's, I mean, yeah, that's what we were talking about. I can't believe it was like six years ago. Like this was a pre-pandemic filming that feels like it could have been filmed during the pandemic and it's coming out after the pandemic. Like I don't even remember what time was like back then. Yeah. Neither do I. <laughs> Because neither do I. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, it is. It is a very pre It is a very pandemic film, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's like one location. You could, totally could have done that apart from the party scene in the pandemic. Oh yeah. God, you I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's true. always. I, I thought I figured this was something that like started during the pandemic, and then you know after you filmed some of the party stuff, because I've had some movies that did that where they like filmed during the pandemic, and then like oh once everything opens up and we're editing, yeah, now we'll like finish it up. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it was just all pre. Yeah, awesome. uh, living in school, weren't we? In the same house. <laughs> yeah. We're living. We, we, the, the visionaries of this film they they predicted what was going to happen and they they uh, well, they knew you know it's genuinely true we all lived in the same house that we filmed in like oh, we wow. all 
all of our rooms in the in the actual film are our rooms uh, we slept yeah. in. Yeah. So you could have made two movies. You could have made followers and then like a reality TV show, like we, making the movie or some some sort of other reality thing. We probably did. <laughs> we had so much footage. <laughs> yeah, because they left a lot of the less expensive cameras with us that they weren't afraid for us to ruin, uh, and we just and we just like shot in character and then sometimes out of character. And our poor poor editor Will Honeyball just had to sift through like hours and hours and hours of footage. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. fun, but also yeah, exhausting. <laughs> yeah, I feel sorry for him. Uh, so, Larisse, how did you prepare for this role? I mean, this feels like maybe someone that you're, you're a very serious character, but you're also like a, a film person, a film nerd. Like, is this something that you kind of understand intuitively just from like being in the industry? Or did you have to like go in and kind of like prepare Zana uh, and like build her up and learn some, about some of the editing things and some of the video uh, techniques that she was doing? Um, well, we had a little crash course from our wonderful DOP, Alan, when it came down to actually working the cameras and filming <laughs> Um, I don't know, to prepare for Zorna, I was kind of a bit more worried about learning the cameras, mm -hmm. which kind of lent itself to her character, I think. I think Zorna's main concern is getting the shot. And my main concern on that set was making sure I was getting the shot. It was terrifying. <laughs> um, but yeah, I kind of just did a lot of research mm -hmm. regarding how to film. How to behave like a film student, and it was um, it was pretty laid back. That was my first real role, you know. I hadn't fully got into the swing of learning how to prep for a character or anything at that point. And I think, I think in a way that worked well for Zorna because she was fresh faced and brand new to this university world and learning the camera as I was learning the camera. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it just kind of where Zorna was meant to be at in her life mm. was in a place to where Larisse was at the time. So kind of just worked well. I can't really say I did any cool prep. I mean, but that's perfect, right? Like you were the character. You didn't need to do anything because that, that was you. <laughs> and and Larisse is also always underplays what she did. She spent like literally the whole time leading up to it, just learning about shots, speaking with Alan, figuring out everything she could about cameras, carrying a camera with her everywhere. So yeah, Larissa had the hardest job of all of us by far, but she'll play it down because she's ridiculously humble. <laughs> Well, that, that, is, that is also kind of, it feels like a, an aspect of Zana's character too. She was a little humble, even though she was very talented yeah. and very driven. So mm -hmm. um, I like Zana's character. Yeah. Zana, I mean, I, I, I liked all the characters. I thought they were all, they were all fun. It was like a nice, like set of personalities to kind of mix into this house. Yeah. Yeah. They merged well, didn't they? Yeah, definitely. Um, so you said that, that you like filmed the scene. So you were like actually filming some of the scenes that were happening. Did, like, uh, did, did both of you take part in that? Or was it was it just Zana? Because she was, like, making the documentary that was, like, the result of this whole experience. That was definitely both of us. And Dan held the camera quite a bit as well. Um, he played Pete. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I would say it was a fairly even share. I feel like Harry's pinning it all on me, but he did a lot. No, well. no, no, no. I, I'd, say, I'd say probably Zona films, what? Well, 40% of the film, mm -hmm. Dan, 25, Jonty, 5, Amber, 0, and Alan, <laughs> the professional cinematographer, the rest. You know, like, Zorna does do most of the filming because she's the one who's interested in cameras. Pete's mm -hmm. effectively like her assistant who's looking for someone to care about and be with. Jonty wants to do it, but he's terrible. And every time he tries, he just puts himself in front of the camera. So Zorna gets annoyed with him and says, right, stop handling the camera. Basically, by the end of the film, I'm not touching cameras anymore because she's fed up with it. Um, and Erin, just who plays Amber, just literally never goes near a camera unless she's taking a video of herself. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'd say you, Dan, and Al shot a lot of the film, but me and Am me and Erin did a lot less. So I don't I don't remember from the credits. Did you all get uh, any any credit for for that in the credits themselves, or no? 
Oh. I've been asked that so much. You should, <laughs> you should, you should get a credit because you, you you could start working on jobs behind the camera as well if you wanted to. <laughs> Maybe I mean that could be a new vocation. Yeah, I mean, like then you'll have those two categories on your your IMDb bio, right? You'll have like a uh, actor and then a, a cinematographer uh, shop. Instead of like a one woman yeah. show, you can do like a one woman film set, and yeah. you just like film everything, <laughs> then get in front of the camera and get behind. <laughs> Or that, that that just sounds like what an influencer does. So you could become an influencer. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you, yeah, you just be David. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, from what I've learned about influencing, it looks and seems hard. That is a lot of work influence put influencers put in. I think I yeah. don't have it in me. Yeah. No. I, I imagine there's a very. I imagine it's, it can be fun and rewarding, but also very tough to like always be on, always kind of be thinking about like the next thing that you have to do and like riding that wave of virality is that a word yeah i'll say it's a word yeah no absolutely yeah. i think i think I, I don't know if it's a word but i'm gonna go with it because yeah. it sounds like it should be yeah. virality, virality. So it's a yeah. word for the new generation yeah. Yeah. um <laughs> so uh i asked harry about this uh so larissa did was there it sounds like there were aspects of zona that you like took after right because it sounds like you learned a lot about cameras and about filming have you taken like that you know that from her character and, and put it into your normal life like do you do your own filming now have you used it in a in a later role i would love to use it in a later role i haven't used it since um but i would really really love to i mean every time i'm on set now i am thinking about the shots <laughs> and the cameras and i would die to get behind the camera again to be fair i did really enjoy it but i haven't really used it since so. There is still plenty of time. And, you know, if you're ever in D.C. and you want to get behind the camera, you can come, you know, I'll start making some weird influencer videos. You can you know, be in the camera. Uh, Harry, you can make a, an appearance somehow. It'll be perfect. Yeah. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm <just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> so I imagine I know the answer to this question, but I'll ask anyways. What was it like working with the cast? It sounds like it was a really kind of fun overall shoot, especially because you were living together. I imagine that was either fun or terrible. It sounds like it was fun. But was it like working with the cast? Was it just like a, a big, enjoyable time? Or was it, the you know, I, I'll let you tell me. Um, I really enjoyed it. I had a fantastic time from the cast. I mean, we got along like a house on fire. Pun not intended. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it was it was just easy, you know. We filmed in sequence, so as the characters were becoming more friendly with each other, getting to know each other better, becoming more comfortable, we were as well. So mm. it just I don't know. I feel like sometimes the lines felt blurred between the film and the reality, mm -hmm. simply because everything was sort of happening at the exact same time. Yeah. But, yeah, it was a lot of fun to film. That's the most fun I've ever had on set by far. It was a very enjoyable environment. Yeah, I, f I feel like me and you got like really, really close. Like we'd yeah. just stay up like hanging in each other's bedrooms and just chatting for hours. And like we've remained really close since the film set's done. Like whenever I'm back in England, we hang out and do stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's great. <laughs> but uh, it's harder to see Dan and Erin because. Um, mm. Dan's based in Glasgow mm -hmm. and Erin's back and forth from Liverpool. Is, is, is Erin, we've actually been trying to get to meet Erin recently. Is she in, in Clapham now or is she in? Do you know, I, I don't know. She's always on holiday. She's yeah, she is. Holiday. <laughs> she actually just booked her role on Coronation Street, didn't she? Yes, yes, she did. So she Which did. is like the most English soap opera ever. You know, it's oh, like awesome. EastEnders and Coronation Street are like the two big ones in England. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, yeah, it was a great, sorry, sorry, oh, no, please, lovely, please lovely cast dynamic, like everyone was so, so close and by the, it just felt like a family, like set, cast, everyone. And I love that, that, that probably came about because you were all living together, probably because, by necessity for an indie budget, you all had to live together, but then that, you know, translated into you all becoming so close during this filming. Yeah, well, I mean, we all had the options of commuting in or living, and I think all of us wanted to kind of feel that method and it was it was like a university experience mm -hmm. you know it really was it was it was really cool i love that you you said that aaron is always on holiday because that that's like every american whenever we hear any sort of european schedule like oh they are, they're always on holiday like they're they have some <laughs> random holiday or look they're taking vacation which is apparently something that you can do i've never heard of it but uh, <laughs> like... i think aaron's just 
just doing well. She's she's booking <laughs> roles and then she's like, Great, I'm taking my two weeks off to Mallorca. <laughs> yeah. So uh it sounds like it was a very fun living environment, but you know, it's a it's a horror movie, it is a ghost movie. Did anything creepy mm. happen during the filming? That that was not intentional? Yeah. For me. At least. I, I'm glad I didn't know, but go on. <laughs> no. But you you know that you know this now, right? We've talked about it since. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't like a big it's one of those ones that probably is like everyone's like, oh whatever. But there was this um closet in my room that was so annoying. I could never get it open. I'd literally have to like tug with all my weight to get it open. Um and even like I had people jump in there to try and jump out and scare me, and they'd have to like barge the door with their shoulder really hard to get it open. And um this one night I was lying in bed with this thing that had been a problem the whole time. It was just after we shot a paranormal scene with Dawn, the ghost. Oh gosh. And it just opened on its own, just really slowly all the way. And I was like, I went back to try and close it and it was so tough. I couldn't budge it. I just managed to get it closed. And I was like, I t- t- turned the light on and fell back to sleep. And I was like, um, <laughs> That like sounds not, like a yeah. terrible way to wake I, up. Yeah. yeah, and I'm a I'm a huge skeptic. Like I don't mm. see ghosts anywhere, and that 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 creeped me out. Yeah, it's weird yeah. how things like that can happen. Like I was in a dorm situation one time, and like we were randomly talking, and people were like, every night, like I wake up at three o'clock in the morning, and like I hear like like sounds in the place. I'm like, that's terrible. Please never tell me that again. And that <laughs> next night. I woke up and I was like, do not look at the clock. Do not look at the clock. And it was like 3.01. I was like, oh, come on. Like, why? <laughs> and, I... and then you just hear like. Yeah. Like you're like, what's that? <laughs> you, know, you, you hear everything when you wake up in that situation. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, the, the, with the family kind of environment, uh, we started on the, on the creep side. Were there any like fun pranks that you all did? It sounds like maybe some of you <laughs> were pranksters, maybe uh uh, you know, Dan was like, uh, or, or was insulting you all the time. Like, was there anything fun that happened? <laughs> I mean, that was very close to reality. I feel like Dan was insulting Harry all the time anyway. He's and just yeah. method acting. It's just, it's just his character, right? That's what he's got to do. <laughs> it was a ton of pranks. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. It was too many. Um, do you remember, do you remember the one with um, Dan and Erin? The one with Dan in my closet, the Erin, uh, this was, this was my favorite one. I thought this I thought this was genius. So Dan so simple was just like, oh, I'm gonna go and hide in Harry's closet, the one that would never open, um, and jump out at him and just get on camera. I didn't know that. He told Aaron. Aaron texted me and said, Harry, Dan is hiding in your closet. He wants to jump out at you, and I'm meant to lure you there. This was like the first day on set. She was like, before he can get out and jump at you, just come in and tell me that you're in love with me. Um, and so the Dan will be awkwardly sat in this closet listening to this <laughs> terrible conversation. Dan also, by the way, had a huge crush on Aaron. They ended up dating after the set. Oh, so, nice. so I head upstairs. I come and she's like, hey, Aaron, I'm like, hey, look, sorry, just real quick. I just have to get this out. Um, I've been having these feelings for you. And I, I just, I think I'm really, I didn't want to like ruin the set or anything. And Dan's sitting there in the closet like, <laughs> and then he just jumps out and goes ah and i was like dan i knew that he's like oh man i thought you were about to ruin the whole set for all of us i was like harry please don't do it <laughs> and now we see where those insults came from it all yeah, builds right exactly <laughs> exactly but no there was so many he uh, we we got each other all these different things he's scottish and he hates the queen so we stuck about 200 pictures of the queen all over the room where he <laughs> slept and then he bought 30 water balloons and tried to throw them on me but i realized what he was doing and grabbed an expensive camera so he couldn't so we threw them all on Aaron instead we yeah we just did a ridiculous amount of pranks on the set it was it was quite fun <laughs> it, it really does sound like it it, it really does sound like a college experience it was yeah yeah or, or uni as, as you all would say it uni yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i know we have limited time so i'm gonna switch i call it the lightning round they're just very lightweight questions about the film i want to see how your personal experiences map to things that happened in the movie you can feel free not to answer any of them i will not be offended but i try to keep them very answerable the first question is do you have roommates how dare you <laughs> uh yes yeah <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah, I have one. I have one, and I live with my girlfriend as well. Very good. That that sounds like a good situation. Yeah. Yeah. I also have roommates. I I marry her, and then we had some kids. So they they. I can't kick them out. They don't. You know, the kids don't pay rent. It's 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 a bad situation. But it, oh, I'm it so can lead sorry. To a lot of fun. That's yeah. you. Know, you know, you should look into like the uh, the state laws. Maybe you can get them out in a few years. <laughs> I don't think that would work out well for me. But uh, I think 18, least... you're allowed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, not anymore. Not in this new world. In this new world, the kids never leave. So, <laughs> <sighs> all right. Uh, this this might be a related question. Have you ever had a bad roommate? Yes. You don't have. You don't have to expound if you don't want to. <laughs> I have. I've had quite a few. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. None of them are going to watch this. You'll be fine. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I have to. Yeah, definitely. Uh, next question is, this is a film about, uh, you know, ghosts. Do you believe in ghosts or other supernatural phenomena? There is no judgment here. You can say whatever you want. I think I do. Yeah. I'm decidedly undecided. <laughs> That's, hey, look, you're just waiting for the, you're waiting for, for bigger proof, right? You just need a YouTube video that has video and audio at the same time. Then, then it'll I need, I, no, I don't need that. I need a ghost to come up to me while I'm fully awake and just say, hey, we're real. And then walk off. And then I'll probably believe. Uh, be careful what you put out onto the internet, Harry. This is, this, this might end well for yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we already talked about, uh, you know, Harry's experience on set. Have you ever experienced any sort of like, I don't know, supernatural thing, weird feeling, something that kind of like, you know, gave you uh, a, a shiver or a, like for, from a supernatural perspective? Yes. This was like two months ago. I thought oh. I saw somebody that I know has passed away stood at the end of my bed. Oh. Ooh. That gave me a shiver. So there we go. Wow. <laughs> Although I guess that that could be like, scary or it could be comforting you, d you don't know it could go either way yeah. yeah i mean it was comforting at the time room was very cold at the time as well but uh i didn't actually believe much until then oh wow and that's when you subsequently moved instant like out of that place right <laughs> <laughs> um have you ever tried a ouija board or a ouija board No, but I know people who are very close to me have had some very interesting experiences with a Ouija board, which is probably why I'm reluctant to try it. Yeah, yeah. no, that's that, that's perfectly understandable. That's why yeah. I don't do I don't do Bloody Mary. I don't think anything will happen, but why why risk it? <laughs> uh, just go and give it a go. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, my my life's doing okay. I don't need any more kind of craziness going on. <laughs> Report back to us. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you don't hear from me, you'll know what happened. Uh, do you have cameras in your house? Um, yeah. But not like not like active. Like Oh, well, okay, like, yeah. like film okay. cameras. Or like 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 yeah, like like okay, okay. I got it. <laughs> I've got I've got like film cameras and stuff. Does that count? <laughs> but no, I don't have like a ring or anything like that. No. I've got like one camera, mm -hmm. two, if you include my phone. Is this just you like trying to find a way to break into our apartments? Is the next question going to be like, do you have like a two factor security system? Yeah. What's uh, <laughs> what's your uh, first you pet's name? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, look, like times are tough. It's tough to find places to stay. <laughs> you all said you had roommates anyways. So, you know, we figure we can just you know, it'll all work out. We'll, we'll, we'll make a movie. We'll, we'll, Followers too, and and making a movie, the reality TV show, it'll all work out. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, this film had a very strange thing found in the house, and I guess that's a minor spoiler. But uh, what is the strangest thing that you have found in a place that you've lived? Ooh. Um, oh, god, that's tough. Actually. That's really tough. Currently did that. Um, when we were moving some shelves, we found this really, really old Polaroid picture of these two random people. It looked like it must have been taken in the early noughties, like 2006 or something. Mm. And it's now just like stuck on our fridge on a magnet. Huh. Intentionally, we put wow. it there. It didn't make it go there. Yeah. But, <laughs> and then those people That's started watching. That's it. I think we found when I was younger. Um, my my parents were 
digging up their back garden um, to like have a new grass relaying, and they found a time capsule. Oh, so, that's like awesome. a little time capsule. Yeah, we couldn't get it open. Oh, <laughs> so I don't know what the point of it was. <laughs> Someday you... you'll get it open, right? Like it, this means you haven't put enough effort into it. Yeah, I don't. I think they threw it. Is that bad? Uh, well, now now it's waiting to be discovered by someone else in the future. I guess. <laughs> I we went to a recycling how... plant. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think that's how time capsules work. It's not this like you know <laughs> deferred trash. <laughs> yeah, probably oh. floating in the Atlantic at the moment. Yeah, oh. the, the, well, that, that, that's that probably a better situation than just going to the dump. <laughs> at least it's like getting to see the world. So yeah. <laughs> um, this is, a, this is an interesting question because of some of the lines in the film. Who do you consider to be the voice of your generation? Hmm. It's depressing if I say no one. <laughs> well, I, everyone, everyone's like everyone's a voice, right? That's what the modern world is. Yeah, well, that's business. kind of a, that's kind of the thing. Like, I don't, I don't think we have. We're not in that kind of uh, period of time where you would have two or three channels. So you would have like Walter Cronkite being the person that everyone like trusted or believed in, or, you know, you, you don't have that sense anymore of those huge powerful leads because every time, every time you want to see these people that you believe are like amazing, there are hit pieces from 120 other people saying all the terrible things they've done. So everyone gets derailed and everyone gets risen up at the same time. Um, I think it's hard to have someone that unifies everyone as well because everyone's so deeply divided and split. So even just our generation are so split on so many different issues, you know, that it, it's kind of tough to say. I think there are tons of people out there doing really good things and really good work, but I don't think there's anyone in particular that stands out for me as like head and shoulders above. I, I really like Greta Thunberg. I think she's mm -hmm. cool. Um, yeah. But apart from, apart from that, I can not give you too many. No, that's that's a that's a very good explanation. Yeah, I I agree. I don't have much to add to that. I would say I would say that way past the time of having a voice of a generation ever again. Anyway, simply because there are so many voices, as somebody said yeah. earlier. Um, yeah, I think that time has passed, and I don't know. I'm looking forward to what society moves into, whilst essentially guiding itself. Yeah. Hmm. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the. I'm hoping. There's... I'm oh, sorry. I was just no, 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 no. Go ahead. TikTok gets banned, but we'll see. No, you, yeah. you, you've seen that TikTok's very close to potentially being banned. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would kind of. I'd kind of like that. That makes me sound really old, doesn't it? it but you're not, I, you're not I, wrong though. <laughs> I just want less voices <laughs> in my head. <laughs> Yeah, but no, there, that, is a, that is a really good point. Like, there is no longer, like, this bar that you have to get over to have your voice heard, right? Like, yeah. you, can, you can get out there and people can hear it. So there's no longer yeah. these, like, artificial I, beacons that we look exactly. to. Exactly. Like, someone said to me recently, the best thing and the worst thing about uh, influencing and all this stuff is that anyone can do it. Yeah. Like, That's right. Anyone. Anyone can do anyone. it. Anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but there are good ones and there are bad ones. Which I mean, <laughs> bad thing. Yeah. We'll say you're good. <laughs> oh, thank you. Why, thank you. <laughs> like and subscribe. Um, <laughs> That's the trailer. Uh, so, do you do you have a YouTube channel or a Twitch channel or I don't know what TikTok like any of those uh, channels? Got an Instagram page. That's That's about it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I don't really use it to be honest, apart from to text the race. Yeah. Yeah. I bet I'm barely on my Instagram. Actually, no, that's a lie. I'm on my Instagram because <laughs> I use it to stalk people. But yeah. I don't post much. I I just I don't know. I'm not that I'm not that heavy into social media really. You posted that picture of us in the elevator. That was that, <laughs> or was, or was that a story? Uh, that just sounds like a story. <laughs> no, I'm not just you're just in an elevator after going to an art exhibit. Yeah. Maurice is like, I'm posting this, and that's it. So you told you so much of a story. It's pretty boring. Yep. Don't know why I brought it up. Well, that's longer than most Instagram stories are. So you know, that's fine. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, 
Uh, one of the fun like turns in this film was when they they got sponsored. So have you ever done like sponsored content? Uh, I guess traditionally it'd be like just like advertisements, but have you ever done like anything sponsored on social media? I'm guessing probably not because it doesn't sound like either of you are big in the social media, but who knows? Yeah, no, well, I have I've been reached out to a fair few times and I've I've got back a fair few times if it's like products that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. And then I go through this whole process of hating myself and being like, what are you doing this for? You sell out. Why why are you accepting a pair of sunglasses for a post? Stop. And then I end up seizing the communication. So to any sponsors out there who are interested, hey. Uh, but yeah, no, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I I've never I've never gone through with it, but I've been I've been very tempted uh, multiple times. Yeah. So, sounds like that voice in your head needs some calming tea from Lipton Tea. So it's it uh... a. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah, yeah. Or is that oh, not you? Nothing. <laughs> no. Actually, this one jewelry brand reaches out to me like every month or so, but um, I'm pretty sure they're a bot. So, yeah. Can they give you jewelry though? Like, will the robots make jewelry and send it to you? Because that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried to give them my address. Sometimes I look. I'm like, Some new jewelry would be nice. It would be good, but also yeah. So here. Quite Here's a hint. Give them your neighbor's address, and then when their neighbor gets the package, they'll have your name on it, and they're like, oh, I must have mistyped it. Oopsie. Oh, that's smart. Or your neighbor will get robbed, and then that's on your conscience. But it's... Yeah, yeah but, you know, then you just have to, like, find the jewelry, and that'll make you feel better, so... Yeah, yeah, that's true. For more helpful life tips, like and, like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> uh the uh the movie is called followers how many followers do you have and you can pick whichever social media you want uh whichever one is either most impressive or least impressive how many followers do you have uh i think on instagram i have like a, a thousand it's respectable yeah on instagram i have like 20 something thousand and then on twitter i have four four that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> Like, like four or four thousand? Four. Okay. <laughs> four. Yeah. That's that's the one. That's the one that's not doing well. Yeah. But uh yeah, I don't go on it. <laughs> um and the uh the last question is before making this movie, had you ever used a cassette tape? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Yeah, my my uh my old roommate had a tape deck in his car and oh, wow. uh We'd we'd sit making cassette tapes, um, and putting out there. We'd like literally made mixtapes. He was indie. He is indie. He so thinks he's so cool. No, he is. Um, <laughs> that is that but, is cool. <laughs> but yeah, no. And I, I used to have a cassette player, and I uh, I do that all the time, listening to music. You know, like Spice Girls and all the other classic hits. Um. So yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, Harry, can you tell me some of the products you use? Because you look fantastic for like a forty-five-year-old. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, just just uh, it's kind of yeah, this despicable nature <laughs> and um, self-loathing that really helps. Yeah. Yeah. Helps keep you young. I, I feel like I've I sounded like I needed help for a long time. <laughs> Well, so you know, <laughs> interview therapy—they kind of like blend together. So this this is, this is just an experience for us all. Yeah, all it's like a seance. Yeah, but more <laughs> mental health tips. Like yeah. and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. Thank you. Wow, it, it just it just keeps going. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. What about you, Larice? Cassettes? Um. Yeah. 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 I've had like I've I had a lot. I used to. Uh, sorry, the sun is setting, so I'm gonna get a lot of glare. It's golden um, hour. It's perfect. It is. It, I should take a selfie, but I won't. And then post it on your stories so that people can <laughs> can see it. <laughs> no, no uh, cassettes. Cassettes. I uh, I used to have this stereo radio thing, and I'd have to put cassettes in, and I'd wait for the radio to like play my favorite song and then record. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. And I had a little Walkman thingy as well. I'm really showing my age now. Um. 
Yeah, Larissa's yeah. 65. Yeah, no, yeah. that's uh that's awesome. Did, you didn't just like play your records and record it on your brand new cassette uh, player while you were while you're playing them. Although I guess records are in now, so I guess that's not actually an old person thing anymore. Yeah, I'm looking at my record player right right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we would do the same. Like I would I'm going to date myself, but we would listen to the radio, which was a thing. And, uh, you know, you wait for like the top 10 and you'd like hope that your song was in the top five and you'd like try to wait and you'd press record before to see if you could get it, but it'd be the wrong yeah. song or you'd start it a little bit too late. So you wouldn't get the intro. And yeah, that was, that was good times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Same. <clears throat> <laughs> so uh the film is followers it's out on digital on demand today on uh, march 24 2023 uh so people can go out check it out see see you both in a very early role that uh feels actually strangely uh relevant now because it feels like a pandemic yeah. movie um people can go out and check it out what can people look for next from you uh you know do you have anything coming out soon or anything you're working on uh Grace? i am not at liberty to say I can't disclose my next project, but um, yeah, you'll you'll be seeing me soon. Excellent. Looking yeah. forward to it. Uh, <laughs> I just wrapped on a TV series that, again. I can't say, but that'll be coming out and um on in June on Netflix and Prime, and then I'm doing a feature film in three weeks called I'm Not You, and I'm doing a war film in November called The Last Siege, which I'm oh, wow. excited about. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, sounds like you're both very busy. Uh, so thank you so much. This is uh, Harry Jarvis and Larissa Harrison. They are the stars of Followers, which comes to digital and on demand on March 24, 2023. Thank you so much for your time. Thank yeah, you. of course. Thank you. That was Harry Jarvis and Larice Harrison, the stars of Followers, which is coming to digital and on demand on March 24, 2023. It's a fun social media and influencer-inspired haunting movie from the producers of Anne and the Apocalypse. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Thank you.